Hello, my name is Marcus Bell, and I'm the Executive Director of the 100 Black Men of Omaha. Hello, and my name is Mark Boxall. I am the President of the Board of Directors for the 100 Black Men of Omaha. Welcome to the 21st Annual African American History Challenge. Um, we, we appreciate all of the students who have been working so hard over the past months to prepare for this great competition. And thank you to everyone who worked really hard, a lot of volunteers to get this competition up and running, particularly in the pandemic. And I want to say thank you to all of the coaches at the uh, high schools that are, and junior highs that are represented here. And most of all, thank you to the young men and women who set aside quite a bit of time to prepare and compete in this very important competition. It's an absolutely wonderful opportunity to showcase your academic talent. Absolutely, absolutely. And we hope you enjoy the show and all the competitiveness that's going to go on. Thank you. Good morning. Check better. All right, well, good morning and welcome to 2021 African American History Challenge. We are in round one of the junior division. Schools represented here. In this round, we have Team Beverage, Beverage, Davis, Buffett, and Bryan Middle School. Are there any questions before we begin? All right. Round one, question one. Joe. Augustus Rogers, author of 100 Amazing Facts About the Negro with Complete Proof, was known to exaggerate the truth, although he was a serious researcher who challenged others to dig deeper. What sentimental piece of art? Three, uh, Buffett. The Klansman by D.W. Griffin in 1905. Final answer. That is correct. <clears throat> Question number two. Though many early depictions misrepresented him as white, in what year did St. Maurice first depicted as black, and where did the first all right, back to Buffett. And CE 1240 in Magdeburg Cathedral in Germany. Final answer. That is correct. Question number three. By the time of his execution in 1539, Esteban and his companions had seen more of the North American Southwest than any other non-Native American. What present day areas did this group travel totaling how many miles? Reset. Oh, sorry about that, and I will reread the question. By the time of his execution in 1539, Esteban and his companions had all right, back to Buffett. Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, and Northern Mexico, and they totaled 15,000 miles. Final answer. That is correct. Question number four. Although a free man, Ayuba Jalu was captured by Mandingo slave traders and eventually was enslaved on a tobacco plantation on Kent Island. What was the name of the ship that brought Halu to the Americas? Brian. That is correct. All right, 
Right now the score is that Buffett, you answered three questions correctly at 15 points. Brian, you answered one question correct at five points. Question number five. According to the text, what was the intention of the negative sample image? Back to Buffett Middle. To naturalize the image of black people as subhuman. Final answer. That is correct. Question number six. Who was the lone descent in the Plessy versus Ferguson case? Buffett? Justice John Marshall Harlan. Final answer. That is correct. Next question. What is the most popular annual celebration Bryan Middle School? That is correct. Next question here. After moving to St. Louis after Reconstruction, how did Sarah, Sarah breathe of Buffett Mill? Question number seven. Okay, so she worked as a laundress and a cook for $1.50 a day on Wednesday. That is correct. Next question here. How many black owned businesses are estimated to have launched between 1880? Here we go, beverage. 40,000, 40, final answer. That is correct. Question 10. Upon her death, Madam C.J. Walker made a donation to the NAACP. How much did Buffett Magnet? $5,000 for the anti lynching fund. That is correct. Next question. Ira Berlin said that 100%. Question 11. Ira Berlin said that 100% of African Americans living in northern states were free, compared to what percentage of free? Here we go, beverage. 6.2%. Answer. That is correct. Final question in round one. What text was published in 1974 that provided a new understanding of where free and in state Buffett Magnet? The New Negro, an interpretation. Um, that is incorrect. I'll reread the question. What text was published in 1974 that provided a new understanding of where free and enslaved blacks lived before the Civil War? Judges, if you missed the question, you can never re answer. So, Buffett, you're off the table. Beverage, Davis, and Brian, the question is yours. One more time. What text was published in 1974 that provided a new understanding of where free and enslaved blacks lived before the Civil War? Thank you. 
Got a clock here. If they, if they haven't responded, all right, time's up. That is the end. Uh, yes, that's the end of round one. Can we get the final score, please? <clears throat> okay, here you go. So, uh, we have a tie between Beverage and Brian. With 10 per second. So we got to do a tiebreaker for them. And Buffett ended up with 35 points. So. Okay. With that said, I need for Buffett to exit and Davis to exit. For a tiebreaker question here. <clears throat> In the 1970s, this Black-owned radio station offered jazz, R&B, and soul music, in addition to offering Black perspectives on current events. Name the station. Founded in 1938, the longest running black owned newspaper in Omaha continues to be. Name that newspaper. Next question here. The largest black church congregation in North Omaha is named what? This Black-owned restaurant was commonly known as Black City Hall because so many Black community leaders gathered there. Name that restaurant. question. Beverage, you've got an opportunity here. What three years did Joe Augustus Rogers want to address through his works in his fight against uh, Can you set? She's hitting the butter. Yeah, she hit the butter. History. Um, history, genetics, and genealogy. Final answer. That is correct. 
Alright, Beverage, you won the tiebreaker. That completes that round. Alright, good morning. Good to see all you wonderful students here. In round two of the 2021 African American History Challenge, Junior High Division, excuse me, Middle School Division. We got Lewis and Clark, Mars Middle School, Monroe, and Morton. Are there any questions before we begin? All right, question number one. Can you uh, reiterate when they give their final, when they give their answer to state final answer? All right, so when you give your final answer, please state whatever your answer is and final answer. Will only count if you say final answer. All right, if nobody answers, then we have time allotted. We'll move on to the next question. If there is a tie, there are tiebreaker questions as well, and we'll move into that phase if the competition lifts itself up for that. All right, let's get going. Round two. What was the enforcement act? Morton. It was a constitutional act designed to protect civil rights and eliminate the KKK. Final answer. That is correct. Next question. African Americans constitute what percentage of the Tulsa population? Morton. 12%, final answer. That is correct. Next question. Who is considered Mexico's most famous? Mars. That is correct. Next question. How much money did George Washington pay Morton? One pound, 16 shillings, final answer. That is correct. Next question here. True or false? Uh, after Dorsey, uh, move to the next question. Got it. What is Fort Moose significance? Morton. It was the first all black town in the United States. Final answer. That is correct. Next question. The memoirs of 12 Years a Slave, Morton. Solomon Northup, final answer. That is correct. The founding editors of the Freeman's Journal were two black free, Morton. John Russworm and Samuel Cornish, final answer. That is correct. We're gonna take a pause there, score update. Score update, we have uh, Mars with five, Morton with 30. All right, next question. Richard Potter was born in Hoppington, Morton. 1783, final answer. That is correct. Though Ira Aldridge was born in Morton. 
London, final answer. That is correct. What was the name of the Spanish king and Kennedy Morton? King Philip III, final answer. That is correct. Final question in round two. What two notable civil rights activists? Mars. One more time. A. Philip Brando, Pittsburgh, no, Marcus Green, and New York Times. A. Philip Brando, Pittsburgh, Korea. Final answer. That is correct. And that ends round number two. Score. So the final score is Mars with 10 and Morton with 50. I have 45. I have 45. I have 45. Okay. It is 45. Thank you. Mr. Wilson. All righty. Thank you so very much. All right, welcome to the final round of the 2021 African American History Challenge. The teams we have participating today in the final round will be Beverage Middle School, Alice Buffett, Mars Middle School, and Morton Middle School. The first question in the final round. During the Great War, Frederick Bruce Thomas was forced to abandon Morton, Constantinople with $25 to his name, final answer. That is correct. Next question. How many black men can't Morton? 150, final answer. That is correct. Next question. What did Dick Rowan Mars? Rowan and Elgin are alone with my women. That is correct. Next question. Which states received Mars? New York, Alabama, and Florida. Final answer. That is correct. Why were young slave women less buffeted? Family and child were responsibilities. Final answer. That is correct. How long did the divorce proceed? Morton. 21 years, final answer. That is correct. What circumstances led to Alexander Bush? Mars. That is correct. Is the microphone on? Yes, they keep your mic. Yeah. Take care of the mic for your mouth. Is that Mars? Okay. Mm -hmm. That was Mars. <laughs> the 
Next question. What two words in Mars? Ink and black. Final answer. That is correct. Next question. Who was the first black woman to receive? Morton. Mary Jane Patterson, final answer. That is correct. Next question. Can it be possible that this man, Alice Buffett, That is correct. Next question. In what year did Major League Baseball? Morton. 1997, final answer. That is correct. This New York colony was burned. Morton. Fort George, final answer. That is correct. And the final question. In the 1920s, the father of Malcolm X, Earl Little, Buffett. The Ku Klux Klan, the KKK. That is correct. That concludes the final round. Thank you very much. My name is Sherman Willis, and I am the moderator of the Senior Division of the African American History Challenge. Looking forward to all of your contributions, and good luck to each of you. I've been very fortunate to have been a part of this for at least 15 years, so this is not my first event. So hopefully you all will get a chance to um, showcase everything you have to offer. Here are a little competition rule updates from what you all have been given before. The moderator, me, will ask the question in full, then state answer. A team must hit the buzzer to be recognized by the moderator to answer the question. Once recognized by the moderator, the answering team can confer on an answer, but only one participant may provide the answer. Once the answer is given, the participant must say final answer. Does everyone understand this modification? Mr. Willis, on the answer, they don't have to wait for you to finish, right? That's what they, we don't, they can answer when you start the question. Yes. That's, That's what the rule, that was changed in there, sorry. Okay. So they can start talking? Yes, yeah, as soon as you start, if you say A, and they know what you're talking, they can buzz in. Okay. Got it. With that update, does everyone understand? Pull the thumbs up. Good. So I want to make sure that I've identified everyone correctly and then we'll test buzzers. We have Northwest here, Vincent, Brian, and Burke. Okay, we'll go ahead and start with Northwest from testing buzzers. Benson, Brian, and Burke. Test yours, please. So let's go ahead and also test your mics. So just say hello. Hello. Turn on the bottom of the right butt. Hello. Hello. At the bottom. Hello. At the bottom. Hello. Yep. Hello. So, okay. Hello. No. It should illuminate, like, hello? 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 Perfect. 
Their ones might illuminate it. Okay. And just one up, a portion of item for you. If you're gonna hold, if you're gonna leave the mic on, you need to hold it in your hand because when you lay it down, it makes a clunk noise. So if you're gonna leave it on, just hold it in your hand. Okay. Because we don't want the clunk noise because that would hurt our all of our ears. Okay. Are we ready to begin? I need a head nod or something. Okay. Are the coaches ready? Absolutely. Are the judges ready? Let's begin. Question one. Over the course of the slave trade, Northwest? 10.7 million. Final answer? That is correct. I'll repeat the full question and provide the full answer. Over the course of the slave trade, how many Africans were shipped between 1525 and 1866? And the answer was 10.7 million. Question two, what does the term horo mean? Northwest? Free final answer. That is correct. The full question, what does the term horo mean? And the answer is free. Question three. St. Maurice is known as the patron Northwest. Armies, soldiers, infantrymen, and Mandresa, Spain. Final answer. That is an incomplete response. Burke. Soldiers, leaders, dollars, Teresa, Spain, Team Market Only. That is correct. Final answer. That is correct. Okay. The question was Saint Maurice is known as the patron state of many things. Name four including one town. The acceptable answers included soldiers, swordsmiths, armies, infantrymen, weavers, and dyers. The city, you could have picked Manresa, Spain, or you could have picked the Mont Italy. Question four. Who said the slave... Uh, hold on. Okay. So he only said three of them. That's all oh, right. right. All right. Right. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I just want to make sure I ask Okay, Burke actually answered or hit the buzzer. That is correct. I'll repeat the question. Who said the slave went free, stood a brief moment in the sun, then moved back again towards slavery? The answer is W. B. Du Bois. Judges, what are the scores? Four people. Thanks for judges, but Currently, right now, we have Burke with 10 and Northwest with 10. Thank you very much. Question five What were the consequences of not abiding by the Louisiana Separate Car Act? Northwest? Uh, a $25 fine and imprisonment up to uh, 20 days. Final answer. That is, that is correct. The question, what were the consequences of not abiding by the Louisiana Separate Car Act and the answer, a fine of $25 or imprisonment up to 20 days? Question six, who was the lone descent Vincent. 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 Justice John Marshall Harlan, final answer. That is correct. The question, who was the lone descent in the Plessy versus Ferguson case? And it was Justice John Marshall Penn, Harlan. Question seven, what state became the first to establish Judah? Northwest? Texas, 1979, final answer. That is correct. The 
poll question, what state became the first to establish Juneteenth as a national holiday and in what year? The answer is my home state of Texas. Question eight, how many black owned businesses work? That is incorrect. Vincent? 40,000 final answer. That is correct. The question, how many black owned businesses are estimated to have launched between 1883 and 1913 in the United States? And the answer is 40,000. Scorekeepers, where are we at? So we have Vincent with 10, Burke with 10, and Northwest with 20. Thank you for the update. Question nine. Upon her death, Madam Walker made a donation. Vincent? She made, um, hello? Hello? Stay there. It, um, she made a donation. She made a donation of um, fifteen thousand dollars to the anti-lynching fund for the NAACP. Final answer. That is incorrect. Northwest. She made a five thousand dollars donation to the anti-lynching fund. Final answer. That is correct. The question, upon her death, Madam Walker made a donation to the NAACP. How much did she pledge and for what did she give this money specifically? The answer is $5,000 to the anti-lynching fund. Question 10, black people have no place in the great books of ancient civil Northwest. Unfortunate roots, or unfortunate, sorry, final answer. That is correct. The question, black people had no place in the great books of ancient civilization because they were considered what race? And the answer is unfortunate. Question 11, to be a slave narrative, it had, Benson? It has to be written in English, a separately, auto, a separate pub, separately published autobiographical text, and um, it has to be per, published by a slave or former slave final answer. That is correct. The question, to be a slave narrative, it has to have three factors. Name two of these factors. Answer, a couple of answers would have included separately published autobiographical text, must be in English, and produced by slaves or former slaves. Question 12, what was the central concern of free Northwest? Education? Final answer. That is correct. The question, what was the central concern of Freedom's Journal for Improvement of Black Condition? And the answer is education. Scorekeepers, what are our final answers? Our final scores. Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me now? All right. So we have Vincent with 15, Berg with 10, and Northwest with 35. Thank you very much. That concludes the first round of the Senior Division of the African American History Challenge. Thank you again for participating. Okay, good afternoon. My name is Sherman Willis and I'll be the moderator of this round two of the Senior Division of the African American History Challenge. Welcome to all of you and thank you again for taking time to participate this year. So in this second round, we have Central High School, North High School, and Westside High School. So what we are gonna do first is just kind of give you an update on the rules as they stand compared with where you first might have uh, seen them. First, here's the competition rule updates. So the moderator, which is me, will ask the question and then you can start talking. Next, a team must hit the buzzer to be recognized by the moderator to answer the question. So don't start talking, hit the buzzer first. Once recognized by the moderator, 
The answering team can confer, but only one participant may provide the answer. Once the answer is given, the participant must say final answer. Does everyone understand the modification? Sure. I want to make sure they can chime in at any time the answer does not, excuse me, the question does not have to be read out before if you know the answer, you know, when he's halfway through or the first word he says, you can chime in, but you're gonna only be able to give the answer based upon that, uh, what he's covered in the, in the question. If everyone understands, I need thumbs up. Okay, so, yes, sir. So just to clarify, I, heard, I understand what uh, Mr. Union is stating, but now if a student, if a team interrupts you to answer the question, which is completely allowed, does the next team have to wait until you restate it or can they jump right in behind it? Or will you recognize if you had two people to hit the buzzer near one another? So the first team you give them an opportunity to answer, will you have to restate the question first or can they go ahead and attempt to answer at that point? I give them the opportunity to, to, to either jump in or to let me do it again. I reset the buzzers afterwards, so I will not pay attention to who else might have provided the number two. All right, so they can go ahead and interrupt again before you finish repeating it again. They can. All right, just one thing. Thank you. Yes. Okay, now I want to make sure first that we test the buzzers, then we'll test the mics. So let's start with Central, North, and West Side. Got it. Now, let's make sure we test the mics. Just say hello. 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 And we want to make sure. The bottom. I think you all uh, press, press the, the bottom. bottom. Oh, very good. Hello? 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 No, no, you had it before. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Hello? Okay. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Hello? 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 Perfect. Now, make sure you do not do this. Because, you know, it makes a noise. So if you're going to answer, either hold it the whole time or be careful when you lay it down. Does everyone understand that? Okay. Participants, are you all ready? Thumbs up. Coaches, are you ready? Thumbs up. Judges, are you ready? Thumbs up. And scorekeepers, are you ready? Thumbs up. Let's begin. Question one, who was considered the first American black magician that attracted, that would be central? Richard Potter. Can you hear me? I hear you. Oh, fine answer. That is correct. The question, and I, what I'll do is at the end, I always repeat the question, full answers accepted. Who was considered the first American black magician that attracted large crowds, and the answer is Richard Potter. Question two. Also in 1825, Ira Aldridge, a free black man, played a slave which exposed the evils of slavery to the British government. Central. They abolished slavery, final answer. That is correct. I'll repeat the question. Also in 1825, Ira Aldridge, a free black man, played a slave which exposed the evils of slavery to the British government. This act caused the British government to do what in 1833? And the answer is abolish slavery. Question three. Describe special field order number 15, including its author, date, and what it specified. Central. The author was William Sherman. Um, the date is 1865, and it outlined the policy for um, uh, the uh, uh, 40 acres and mule, but the mule was not a part of it yet. Um, and it it, uh, it took it got like it got land from previous slave owners, and um, kind of was said like, okay, we're gonna use this for this. Answer. Sorry, that was. Kind of Judges, that is correct. It's not very eloquent, I'm sorry. I'll repeat the question and the acceptable answer. Describe special field order number 15, including its author, date, and what it specified. The acceptable answer would include 
Much of the following. Special Field Order Number 15 was the source of the policy of 40 acres and a mule. Union General William T. Sherman issued it on January 16, 1865. The order called for, quote, a strip of coastline stretching from Charleston, South Carolina to the St. Jones River in Florida, including Georgia's Sea Islands and the mainland 30 miles in from the coast. Question four, what was the name of the lone voter who disagreed with Garrison Frazier? Central. Lynch, final answer. Judges? That is correct. The question, what is the name of the lone voter who disagreed with Garrison Frazier? His complete name was James Lynch. Scorekeepers, where are we at? Currently, right now, we have Central with 20. Thank you very much. Question five. What term refers to the formal acts of emancipation by Central? Manumission, final answer. That is correct. The question is, what term refers to the formal acts of emancipation by slave owners? And the answer is manumission. Question six. Name three states where the text refers to the upper south and the lower south. North. South Virginia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and then I'm going to say Lower South, Georgia, Alabama, and Florida. Final answer. That is incorrect. Central? Upper South, Maryland, Virginia. North Carolina, Lower South, oh, yeah, Lower South, excuse me, uh, South Carolina, Texas, Florida, final answer. That is correct. I'll repeat the question and provide the acceptable answers. Question, name three states where the text refers to the Upper South and the Lower South. Acceptable answers for Upper include Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, Kentucky, Missouri, Tennessee, District of Columbia. Acceptable answers for lower include Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, South Carolina, and Texas. Question seven. What nickname did Eugene Ballard earn while with the 170th Infantry? Central. The Black Swallow of Death, final answer. That is correct. I won't repeat because she gave the complete answer. I gave you the complete question. Question eight. In 1860, 174 free blacks lived in Richmond, Virginia. What were some of the occupations they held? Name it, please. Central. Um, carpenter. Uh, bricklayer and plasterers. Final answer. That is correct. Full question. In 1860, 174 free blacks lived in Richmond, Virginia. What were some of the occupations they held? Name at least three. Acceptable answers included barbers, plasters, carpenters, blacksmiths, shoemakers, and bricklayers. Scorekeepers? One second. I'm going to verify it now. Sorry, sir. It's a uh, 40 central. Thank you very much. Question nine. Three blacks in the South created a system of blackness based on grit. North. Leto, um, biracial, um, 
cool as each one. I think it's where you have one black great, um, one black great grandparent, and then um, where you have one <coughs> black grandparent. Blue. Final answer. Judges. That's an acceptable answer. I'll repeat the question. Three blacks in the South created a system of blackness based on gradations. What were the names of these three classes and what distinguished them from one another? Acceptable answers included mulattoes of biracial, quadrants as one black grandparent, octarons as one black great grandparent. Question 10. What court case upheld segregation in Boston's public schools? Central. Roberts versus Boston, final answer. That is correct. The question is, what court case of held segregation in Boston's public schools during Annabella? And the answer is Roberts versus Boston. Question 11. In 1919, a separate black branch of this organization was established at 22nd and Grant, where its activities included Bible study, self-defense classes, and domestic skills training. North. Um, the YMCA final answer. Can you repeat, please? The YMCA final answer. That is incorrect. Central? Uh, it's the YWCA. That is correct. Final answer, sorry. Question. In 1919, a separate black branch of this organization was established at 22nd and Grant, where its activities included Bible study, self-defense classes, and domestic skills training, named the organization, the YWCA. Question 12. As early as 1873, the Nebraska Supreme Court ruled that blacks could not be excluded from what civic duty? Central. Jury duty, final answer. That is correct. Question, as early as 1873, the Nebraska Supreme Court ruled that blacks could not be excluded from what civil, civic duty? Serving in juries is an acceptable answer. That concludes round two of the senior division of the African American History Challenge. Thank you again for your participation. So we are in the senior division and the final round. Now remember, unlike the preliminary round, in this round, we can have a point deducted for incorrect or incomplete answers. Does everyone understand that distinction from the preliminary round? Now, are you all ready? I need a thumbs up. Coaches, are you all ready? Thumbs up. Judges? Scorekeepers. Let's get to it. Question one. Ad al Rahman Ebrahima was sold to European slave hope. Northwest? Natchez, Mississippi, final answer. That is correct. I'll repeat the question. Abd al Rahman Ibrahima was sold to European slaveholders and shipped 5,000 miles away through the Mill Passage. Where did he finally end up? And he ended up in Natchez, Mississippi. Question two How much money was raised on Abd? Northwest? Uh, 3,500 and freed Ibrahima's uh, children, Simon and Lee. And it freed Simon's wife and children. Final answer. That is correct. I'll repeat the full question. How much money was raised on Ab al Rahman's Ibrahima's behalf in the United States? Where did the money go to? The answer was $3,500. 
bring two of Ibrahim's children, Simon and Lee, along with Simon's wife and children. Question three. About 6,000 black people lived in Chicago in 18... Northwest? More than 65,000 final answer? That is correct. The question was, about 6,000 black people lived in Chicago in 1880. By World War I, how many lived there? And the answer is more than 65,000. Question four. How did Langston Hughes refer to Jean-Baptiste? Northwest? A brown-skinned pioneer who founded the Windy City. Final answer? That is correct. The question was, how did Langston Hughes refer to Jean-Baptiste in his week-by-week -week column? And the answer was, as the brown-skinned pioneer who founded the Windy City. Question five. What was the name of the ship slaves revolted on? Northwest. La Isabella, the Spanish crew got sick, and with the help of the free Africans, they killed the crew and took over. Final answer. There it is. That is correct. I'll repeat the question to provide the answer as indicated here. What was the name of the ship slaves revolted on while still close to the African coast in 1814? How were they able to succeed? Answer, the La Isabella, more than half the Spanish crew had gotten sick and died. The captain, the Spanish captain, hired three Africans to replace them, but the three Africans helped the enslaved to kill the remaining members of the crew and take control of the ship. Question six. How long did Solomon North the Northwest? Eleven years, eight months, and twenty-six days. Final answer. That is correct. The question was, how long did Solomon North spend as a slave? The answer is eleven years, eight months, twenty-six days. Question seven. Thomas Hagen was a part of a group of persons attributed. Northwest. Talmadge Hayer, final answer. That is correct. The question was, Thomas Hagen was part of a group of persons attributed with the assassination of Malcolm X. What other name was Hagen known by? And the answer was Talmadge Hayer. Question eight. For how many miles did Henry Brown Benson? Four miles, final answer. That is incorrect. Northwest. Three miles, final answer. That is correct. I'll repeat the question. For how many miles did Henry Brown hold his wife's hand as she and her children were being shuffled through the streets of Richmond into slavery? And the answer is three miles. Question nine. The address Henry Box Brown was originally set Northwest. The Anti-Slavery Committee's Office on North 5th Street. Final answer? That is correct. Question. The address Henry Box Brown was originally set to be delivered to was changed. So where was he actually delivered? And the answer was the Anti-Slavery Committee's Office on North 5th Street. Question 10. This slogan represented... Benson? Democracy at Home Abroad, final answer. That is accepted as an answer. That is correct. The question was, this slogan represented the true bell cry of colored America. The uh, original answer provided was double B, but the judges have accepted your answer as a correct answer. Question 11. Long before the transatlantic slave trade brought African people to the New World, slavery was supported by what two major religions? Central. Christianity and Judaism, final answer. That's correct. The full question and answer were provided, so I won't repeat it here. Question 12. The Emancipation Proclamation did not abolish the institution of slavery in the United States. Central. 
It freed slaves in the in the Confederacy who had the ability to uh, to escape and get behind like the Union lines. That is correct. The question was: the Emancipation Proclamation did not abolish the institution of slavery in the United States. Who were the only slaves? who were considered free by the Emancipation Proclamation, and the answer was, it freed only the slaves in the Confederate states who could manage to flee their plantation and make their way behind liberating Union lines. Question 13. What is Executive Order 8802? Benson? Stop discrimination in the armed forces, final answer. Judges? That's incorrect, Central? It created the FEPC and it ended discrimination in um, the war man in the war. That's good. Manufacturing? Judges? It created the FEPC. Hold just a second. Central's answer will not be accepted at this time. Northwest. Okay. He created the Fair Employment Practices Committee and it stated that there shall be no discrimination in the employment of work workers in defense industries or government. Final answer. That is correct. Uh, the reason why uh, we did not accept Central's answer is because one of the other students uh, one student was speaking and giving the answer, and then another uh, counter student chimed in as well, which is not accepted. Okay. So that's why. I'll repeat the question for the full answer provided was Executive Order 8802, and what did it do? The answer provided was that it was the Fair Employment Practices Committee, signed by President Franklin Roosevelt, on June 25th, 8, 1941, and it stated. There shall be no discrimination in the employment of workers in defense industries or government because of race, creed, color, or national origin. Question 14. During the transatlantic slave trade, 1525 to 1866, 12.5 million Africans that were shipped. Benson? 388,000 final answer. That is correct. I'll repeat the question. During the transatlantic slave trade from 1525 to 1866, 12.5 million Africans that were shipped to the New World. Of them, 10.7 million survived the Mill Passage, disembarking in North America, the Caribbean, and South America. How many were actually transported directly from Africa to North America? And the answer is 388,000. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the championship round of the senior division of the African American History Championship. Congratulations to all of you. Congratulations to Northwest High School and Morton Middle School on winning the 21st 100 Black Men of Omaha's African American History Challenge competition in the senior and junior divisions. This year's competition looked much different than it has in the past. You were faced with many challenges when it comes to preparation and competing. However, your teams persevered and were able to come out on top. The goal of this reading and oratory competition is to increase the study of African American history while encouraging pride, self-worth, and an appreciation of the African American history 
and legacy right here in Omaha. The Omaha Public Schools have supported this learning opportunity since its inception 21 years ago. Northwest High School, Morton, Magnet Middle School, we are very proud of both of you. Congratulations, OPS Proud.